Okay, so now that we have our slab from the slab roller, um, I have put a piece of canvas on my workspace so that my clay doesn't stick to the table. Um, I would recommend going ahead and taking a really damp sponge and just smoothing out your slab. Get all of that texture from the slab roller off of your slab on both sides, um, just so that it is nice and smooth as you move on to the next stages of your project. So these first steps, everybody will do no matter which one of the options you're making, whether you're making a column, a tiki, or a totem, everyone will do these first steps. And then from there is when you'll start branching off depending on which style you're making, okay? So our new technique is draping. So draping is anytime you are putting a slab of clay over something so that it takes on the shape of that object. So in our case, we're gonna be draping over a cylinder so that we can make a cylinder for the beginnings of your project, okay? So we will be draping. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a cylinder. You could drape a piece of clay over a bowl so that it takes on the shape of a bowl. You could drape over really anything, but if it's taking on the shape of that object um, and you're using a slab to drape your clay over, then we are using the draping technique. Okay, so everyone needs to make a cylinder with a base. And then from there, I'll give you a couple pointers for moving forward, um, depending on which project you're choosing. But again, everybody will do, the, do these first few steps. So I've got a PVC pipe, and this is what we're gonna use for our draping. They are in the tool cabinet under the Colts bucket, bottom left-hand shelf. And because it's plastic, if I were to just try to put this right on my clay, it would stick. So the first thing that we want to do is cover the PVC pipe with paper towel. It doesn't quite get all the way around, so you need two paper towels. And we do not want to tape the paper towels to the tube, otherwise it'll be difficult to get out of our clay later. So I'm just gonna tuck both ends in. Okay, and then to prepare my clay to drape over the tube, I am going to take a ruler and I'm going to cut a straight line all the way down. I'm gonna use that clay later. And then I'm gonna make another line that's horizontal. And I'm gonna go all the way. And I actually need 13 inches to get all the way around this tube. So that's 12, and then I'm gonna add one more inch. Now, at this point, you need to decide how tall you want your drape to be. So how tall do you want your cylinder to be? Now, overall for the project, the requirement is six inches tall. However, your drape does not necessarily need to be six inches tall. So if you decide that you're gonna make your drape four inches tall because you know that you're gonna add things to the top of it, that's fine as long as you have a drape. In the end though, your project needs to be six inches tall and you at least have to have at least some drape. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make my drape five inches tall. I know that I'm gonna add to the top. So I'm gonna line my ruler up with the bottom, my horizontal line here. I made a dot at five over here. I'm gonna make a dot at five again and then I'm going to connect those dots. And I want it to be 13 inches. So I'm gonna move over and add that extra inch. Okay. And then from here is where I start draping. So I wanna line the bottom of the tube up with the bottom of my piece of clay Rather than try to peel the clay up off of the canvas, I'm actually gonna take the canvas with me and peel it away. You're less likely to rip your clay. First, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm gonna have a little bit of overlap. I see that I'm going to, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that line. And then, so you do want a little bit of overlap so that you have a place to slip and score. Once I know that I have that, I'm gonna score both. 
slip one. Okay, so remember, score deeply. Slip is like glue. We need enough glue that it's gonna stick. And then I'm gonna make sure that there's overlap and stick those together. Now we've created a seam. We know that a seam is a weak spot. So I'm going to kind of push that down. You can kind of roll it as well to help that seam go away. And then I really want to smooth it away. So here is your drape. So we have now draped our clay. That's the new technique for this project. But everyone also needs a base on their project. So I've draped my cylinder, now I need a base. So I've got my um, extra piece of clay that I had from cutting. First, I'm just gonna trace. I'm not actually cutting my base through yet. I'm just giving myself a guide so that I know where to slip and score. So again, score both. And this is why I lined the bottom of the tube up with the bottom of my clay so that um, I could add my base. It's easier to add your base when you still have the tube in there. So slip both, or score both, slip one. Does not matter which piece you put the slip on. And it's okay if you get slip on your paper towels. They're gonna come out here in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna wiggle that on. Now I'm going to actually cut my base. Okay, and we should be able to pull that out. Again, we have a seam, so smooth kidney, finger, modeling tool. Make sure that you get that seam away. It's easier to do all of this with the tubes still in your drape, so it helps kind of keep its shape. Okay. However, once I've got my base on there and I've got that seam smoothed out, really, really important that we get the tube out. You absolutely do not want to leave the tube in um, overnight. First of all, other people need it. And second of all, if your clay starts to dry on the tube, we know that when clay dries, it shrinks. It's gonna get stuck on the tube. You're not gonna be able to get the tube out and then you're gonna have to start over. So. I'm gonna go ahead and take my tube out. I'm gonna untuck my paper towels. You should be able to slide the tube out and then pull the paper towels out. We now have a seam on the inside and around the bottom. Um, on the inside, you can use your thumb or you can use a wooden modeling tool to get that seam away. On the bottom, you can kind of just drag the modeling tool around the bottom so that we have a nice strong cylinder. So everybody will do this part. From here, you are looking at your sketches, looking at your design, deciding if you are doing a column, a tiki, or a totem, and then you're gonna start adding designs so that it goes with that um, style. So if you are doing the column, a couple helpful things. I've got this circle divider here. If you want to do the vertical lines up the side, uh, I'm going to put this in the middle here. Let's say I want eight lines. So every time I have a number eight on my circle divider, I'm going to put a little mark. And then once I get all my little marks, I'm going to use my ruler and I can make that line all the way up the side. Okay, so I'm just making sure that my ruler is sitting flat on the table. If you want more than eight, because this only goes up to eight, once we get all of these on here, we can essentially turn it and you could have 16. So then if I want more, I can turn it so that now the eight is in between where my lines are. And then I would just make those lines and then you would have 16. Um, if you want your lines to be wider, you can grab a ribbon tool. Okay, so I'm going to grab a ribbon tool. 
and while holding the ruler, that's gonna make it so that they're a little bit deeper. Just be careful that you don't carve through. Um, and then another thing that might be helpful if you're doing a column, to get the upper angled part of the column, we need to essentially make a rainbow. So I've got a compass here and I'm gonna use my needle tool and I'm gonna make a rainbow. I'm not carving all the way through, I'm just making the line. Decide how tall you want it to be. I'm gonna make another line. Okay, this one is not gonna go all the way around my column. So if I cut this, Okay, so I essentially have a rainbow piece of clay. I could then slip and score that onto my column right here. And I could trace it, make another one to fit on the other half, and then it would angle out. Um, if you're doing the Dort column, you could do a pinch pot on the top for the bowl. Um, but then you're just gonna kind of take it from there, decide which column style you are mimicking and how you want to show your own expression with it and go from there. Um, as far as the tiki is concerned, the tiki needs to have wood grain. A couple different ways to do wood grain. You could just do a very stylistic uh, wood grain pattern with your needle tool if you wanted or with the ribbon tool. Um, if you want it to be a little bit more um, natural, you can kind of just hack away at it with a ribbon tool. Um, the large end or the small end, and that's going to make a very textured kind of wood grain pattern. So either one works. I would highly recommend getting your wood grain in there before you start adding any of your features. Remember for the tiki, you should have very exaggerated large features, and we want to really make it look like a face. So it should look like it's a part of um, your drape, not just like a nose stuck on. It should look like it's a part of it. So uh, remember that as well as you add. And then if you're doing the totem pole, um, I would suggest maybe doing a larger drape. So we've got a six inch tube and an eight inch tube. Maybe do the eight inch tube since you need three animals. Remember it can come up above. And I would suggest a wood grain pattern just like on the tiki um, if you are doing the totem. So those should all be helpful tips as you start this project. Just remember to pay attention to the characteristics of each of the three options, the European column, the tiki, or the totem pole as you do your designs and continue on with your project.